Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast daily. Happy Monday and sad end of the football season. That is Bill Landis and I am Austin Ward. The Super Bowl is in the books and uh, Bill is sad or happy. Uh, we don't know yet. We're <laughs> This is recorded in advance because we thought that would obviously be uh, more conducive for everybody who wants to enjoy a Super Bowl Sunday, especially Bill as he uh, is watching the birds after he goes to watch the Ohio State basketball game. Uh, we don't know the outcome of that at this moment either, but we weren't going to really plan on talking about that anyway. Uh, if you do notice one thing that's different uh, from this show this week is that Bill is on his phone because his laptop was tired of the suffering at the shot and just jumped out <laughs> of his backpack last week during the Ohio State Northwestern game. Yeah, uh, it turns out that the combination of uh, laptop and the concrete floors of Value City Arena is is not a good one if you want your laptop to work. So uh, Apple is currently making that, uh, uh, working to rectify that, I guess, and I'll have my laptop back in short order, but for now, I'm, I'm on the phone. T I, want to, I want to hear the play-by-play -play of this. Like, how... <laughs> yeah, so uh, I have, like, a little, there's, like, a little pouch in my backpack, like, on the on the back of it it's like a side pouch where i put my laptop and for some reason it was open i think i think uh there's like a security check in there and i like if i'm being honest they rarely if ever actually check your bag uh yeah. and and this time they did so, so i opened that that pocket to take out my laptop and i put it back in and forgot to zip it up and then when i went to fling my backpack back over my shoulder i just heard this really loud thud and turned around and then looked at the ground and saw my computer at my feet and then uh, opened it up and the screen, uh, there was like, it looked like there were eight different screens on my laptop screen, which was nice. So uh, yeah, I had to get that fixed. Well, that's just the multiverse, which is where apparently you live now. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Uh, so you did, you had the delayed reaction. You had to spend like three minutes walking to your seat, not knowing if it was actually broken or no, I right stopped away. right there. Yeah, yeah. I picked it up off the ground. There was like a little security table there. I put it on the security table and opened it up and uh, learned my fate immediately. <laughs> well, I'm actually surprised that you say it could be back by Tuesday. That's a that's a rapid turnaround based on what I saw of your screen. Yeah, it got smashed pretty good. And I took it to the Apple Store on Friday thinking that I might not have it for a week. But uh, I got the notification on Saturday that it was in the process of being shipped back to me and should have it sometime on Tuesday. So, so you still wrote three points from that basketball game on Thursday I night. I sure did. How did you do that? I have a very <laughs> old uh, Mac desktop computer from like 2015. and I don't know. I guess that's very old in computer computer terms. Uh, that I purchased off my old friend Ari Wasserman and have not used in quite a while. Uh, so it was very slow, and it took me like three hours to write a basketball story because I kept getting the spin wheel of death on my computer every time I tried to switch out a window. Uh, that That's amusing. I feel yeah. horrible. That's at, I mean, that's every journalist's worst nightmare, especially like us. And Well, I mean, we all work directly on our laptops anymore, even – even old school newspapers, you can't do your job without it. So that I did not enjoy that misery on your end, but at least it's going to come to a quick resolution. And you were still able to go on Friday to get into some Ohio State football talk here to uh, an event that Cohesion had with the Buckeyes at the Ronald McDonald uh, House Charity. Um, you and I were out there and uh, nine Buckeyes took part in that. What, what can you learn about some, uh, a charity event? Well, we got to talk to Miles Walker, we got to talk to Jihad Carter, both of those guys for the first time. We also talked to Kyle McCord. So there's obviously some value in that. There's also some value. Pretty much the entire like the entire offensive line class was there. So we yeah. got to see them at least walk around and catch some rubber bands that were thrown at them by some of the kids and <laughs> see their their hand eye coordination. So I felt like it was worthwhile on several fronts. What what did you make of it, Bill? Yeah, it was cool. Um it was one like just to see that facility. Like I, I actually don't live too far from it. I drive by it quite often, but I'd never been in there before. Um, and I know the work that the Ronald McDonald house does for those families over there. So it was, it was cool to just kind of like get an inside look at that. We actually were able to like take part in a tour with the players as they went through and then watching those guys interact with, with the kids and the families there was, was really cool as well. And they seemed to enjoy themselves. So it was nice to see like that side of NIL, I guess, like, you know, I, I, I'm a person who thinks that these guys should just get paid to play football. But if they have to do things to, to get the money that, that's coming their way, um, 
it might as well be something like that. So, so I thought that was, was a nice uh, kind of afternoon evening for everybody involved. And then obviously for our purposes um, to talk to those guys was, was really worthwhile to talk to Kyle too. Like it wasn't a super in-depth conversation. It wasn't, wasn't five minutes, um, but just to kind of get his early thoughts on, on where he is heading into this process and, and, the, and the battle with Devin Brown, uh, I thought was interesting. Yeah. And the fact that Kyle McCord was there with eight other essentially first time Buckeyes. So the another reason that we're talking about this and like there was a lot of benefit for for you and me is that Ohio State has traditionally had a day with all of the early enrollees, whether those are transfers, transfers or just the new uh, freshmen. That's tended to happen on uh, the signing period day, the traditional one where Ohio State's no longer actually signing players but in early february and that's the first opportunity to talk to them about what it's like to transition to life in college go through workouts with mickey Murati, uh you know give some insight into why they chose ohio state all that stuff and that has not yet happened at this point for ohio state this offseason and it may not because we're already into the middle of february so um you know that was the first time first introduction um with miles walker and jihad carter with any sort of interview with the ohio state media that i'm aware of so that that was interesting but then also just for those eight guys that are outside of Kyle McCord that's the first time that they're going out in the community as members of Ohio State representing Ohio State have the block O on uh, and I think they that can help get a good feel for <laughs> the, the expectations and and also just how they handle it being in that environment because the the spotlight is different even if everyone there all those kids just wanted to they couldn't care less where they were on the depth chart or yeah. if they'd ever played it down. Uh, but those those th two things there are significant. Plus, thirdly, the fact that Kyle McCord uh, is giving his time. We so I sort of asked him, like, just, you know, trying to be a leader and help these new guys out. It sounds strange because he's only started one game and been on campus for two years. But, you know, he's wanting to be a little bit of the the Pied Piper there and establish his his bona fides. There's been a lot of conversation about that. Is Kyle McCord going to be that vocal leader? Leader and you know he talked and he and he went around with eight new guys on campus. So I don't, yeah. those are sort of the rundown for me. Yeah, it was it was interesting. I, I, when we got there, I turned to you and I said, "This is an interesting collection of players because it was all the freshman offensive linemen: Vic Cutler, Jahad Carter, Malik Hartford, uh, Jelani Thurman. I don't know if I'm missing one, and then." Uh, Kyle and it's like, well, which which of these guys is not like the others? Like, oh, the guy who might be the starting quarterback this year. Um, <laughs> and I don't like it's. You probably make too much out of that, I, I, I suppose. But I do. I find it interesting. One that he was there and sort of, as as he said, kind of helping those guys get the lay of the land, uh, kind of learn what it's like to be being a new town, especially guys like Vic and and Jihad who have not been here very long, kind of had to hit the ground running. Uh, but also too that he was even like involved with cohesion too. I think is 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 interesting because obviously the i think the thing that people want most out of out of these nil collectives is like to keep the really good players in columbus uh, and uh certainly kyle mccord is one of those guys so to see this the the presumptive i suppose starting quarterback maybe that's too strong uh and, and involved with them uh i think is is noteworthy yeah i think i mean we don't know what any of their deals are going to be like and uh, as far as i know no one is ever going to have to report that specific income with these players, at least not publicly outside of the IRS or your tax returns. But uh, we get asked all the time, like what the deals are like for current players or how active or aggressive uh, any of the collectives are going to be moving forward for Ohio State's philosophy. Well, you know, if there was uncertainty about at least cohesion side of it, those were eight new players forget about the Kyle McCord part of it. Like he's already on campus that we already know he'd have some income coming in from uh, last year and, and the year before, I suppose. But uh, you know, they, those guys have been on campus for three weeks. I think Jihad Carter said, and they are already had been engaged with this collective and that can't be by accident. So right. the recruiting class and then the transfers had to have already had some sort of introduction to what cohesion could do for them, whether that was set up in advance or not, I don't know. But uh, if anyone was wondering about that side of it, certainly there are deals in place with incoming players um, and set up, or at least set up quickly after once after they get here. Yeah, I think that's th that's been a little bit of um, a misconception. I think with Ohio State is that they they have not done anything with incoming players. They they have clearly. 
Um, how much of those conversations happen before they get here, I, I, I don't know. But the fact that like every we've seen every member almost, I think, of the recruiting class do some kind of NIL related activity on social media already. And we saw those guys there with cohesion um, speaks to the fact that those conversations have happened. Um, <clears throat> you know, whether or not Ohio State ever gets into the business of, of millions of dollars on the table for those kind of things, I, I don't know. But um, it was a reminder that they're not just sitting by and doing absolutely nothing when it comes to making deals for the guys who are coming into the program. Uh, what did you make of the size of those early enrollees on the offensive line? No yeah, I, on. I like that uh, that Miles Walker uh, said that he was small, and I looked. <laughs> I'm a big guy, and I looked up to him. I said, "Brother, you're six six two eighty. You're you're not you're not small." I get what he was saying though, because he is he is he looks like skinny. Like uh, uh, I guess as skinny as a man who's two hundred eighty pounds can look, but he he almost looks like a basketball player a little bit more than than a football player. Um, but like definitely a tackle body. Like I, I, that was kind of what I was curious about seeing, uh, all those guys that the four freshman offensive linemen, and I don't really consider Joshua Padilla or even Austin Saraville to be in the mix to play tackle, but Luke Montgomery and, and Miles Walker certainly are, are going to be in that conversation. And both of those guys, I think, look like players who can grow into the kind of athlete you'd want to play tackle at Ohio State. Yeah. Uh, just after one month on campus, I'm not really sure that Berm's theory that Luke Montgomery could ever play center is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big center. Yeah. Uh, he uh, and also he he was pretty impressive to watch. With um, he sat with a family and talked to them for an hour, and I don't think he ever stopped smiling at this event. Um, he I think he's got some of that, and maybe people already know that from Berm's conversations and his coverage of Luke Montgomery that that he's a very personable and outgoing kid. And you can see how that would have been beneficial for Ohio State using him as a recruiter. But um, again, we're reading into a couple hours and probably unfairly or, or to too much um, hyperbole, you know, it's too much stock into one day that's not even football related. But you can see how those guys carry themselves. And mm -hmm. I think that Luke Montgomery is probably going to be a guy that's asked for a lot for the next four years to come talk to the media because he's good at it and uh, and seems to have a good attitude about doing so. Yeah, that and I think that translates to to and probably more importantly for Ohio State's purposes, like being a leader, being a captain kind of guy for the for the team eventually. Um, and I don't I don't know this, but I would as assume that he is a guy who's pretty vocal in workouts or or a guy maybe he doesn't overstep his his boundaries because he's a freshman, but I think he's probably not a guy who's who's unwilling to to kind of rally his even if it's just his classmates kind of around him as they get going on this journey as college football players and obviously that's a role that can expand and keep growing over his years in the program so like if you're if you're looking for a guy and, and burr might have said this in the superlative story that he wrote like who's who's quote-unquote captain material in this class i think you have to put luke montgomery at the top of that list do you, so we're gonna everyone who's watching this on the podcast daily on monday morning will know the outcome but what? How are you feeling about the birds right now, as we sit here on Sunday morning? Yeah, I feel I feel okay. Um, I was just reading a story actually on NFL.com that the that the Eagles had secretly hired Vic Fangio to help them like prepare for the Chiefs, which I was happy to see. <laughs> uh, what that means, I guess. Well, I guess by this point you're reading this, you'll you'll know what that meant. Maybe it meant nothing. Or listening to this, you'll know it meant nothing. But uh, I feel okay. I, I, I'm going into this thinking that they'll be able to run the football pretty well against Kansas City. Um, and that could be the, the thing that decides the game for them. You told me on Friday that you didn't feel as emotionally invested in the Super Bowl yet as as obviously when you were younger, perhaps. But yeah, uh, has that has that changed as the games got closer? It's, it feels a little different now on Sunday morning for sure. I, I, yeah, that's the thing. Like even when they won a couple of years ago, like I I was here, I watched it on my couch by myself basically. Um, so it's just different. Like I'm not like my whole family's getting together in the city. They're they're going to a, a bar that we like there to watch the game. There's going to be a million people there. If I were there and involved with that and like gearing up for that, I'd be in a much different mental space than I am currently. But like now, it's like I'm going to go to the <laughs> basketball game. I'm going to go pick up some wings, and then we're going to come home. I'm going to watch the game uh, with my wife and my baby, and they'll probably be asleep by the time it's like the fourth quarter. So, <laughs> wow. Well. That baby might only know a world where the Eagles are the champions. What a so charmed life that kid's living. <laughs> well, we'll actually be able to check in and see uh, later on how Bill is feeling. It, now that we know the outcome at Roosters on Monday uh, for the live show in the Horseshoe Lounge, we'll be back there uh, for a little bit more current conversation. Um, 
but yeah, maybe you'll you'll join that. Join maybe Bill will be in too good of a mood to show up to Roosters. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we'll have to see uh, how that works. But uh, this has been an interesting and different version of the podcast daily. I don't think that we've ever covered a Valentine's Day event on this show before, and may not ever again. But it certainly there's a lot more. Uh, holiday type things coming from cohesion i understand and that they're ramping up things not only with their staff but some of the engagement directly with uh, the ohio state players so uh, i i think for everybody who's been following the developments of nil uh, these are steps in the right direction for ohio state Uh, but we'll see it's it's early days for that and it's the early part of the week on the podcast we have a lot more shows coming your your way all week long that's bill landis i'm austin ward thanks again for joining us we will talk to you later on the podcast